We have an incredible story this morning. On Friday, as you know, Americans marked the 25th anniversary of the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. As you'll recall, it broke up 73 seconds after launch. Today, one of the astronauts will be honored by his hometown in an incredibly moving way. His name was Ron McNair, and before he went into space, he made a stand as a little boy. Steve Osinsami is on the story. Ron McNair from little old Lake City, South Carolina, left this small town to see the world from the heavens above. He was one of the seven astronauts who were lost when the Challenger exploded 25 years ago. In the mission before, in 1984, he became the second African-American to ever fly in space. I see it as something that's part of man's nature to explore as far as he can, as deep as he can into the unknown. It was all such a long road from his humble beginnings outside Charleston, where today they remember their lost son. Ron had a passion for learning. In 1959, when McNair was just nine years old, he famously made a scene at the town library when he tried to check out books on science and advanced calculus. His former grade school principal says McNair was a genius of a little man, trapped in a world of colored water fountains and segregated schools. Black children were not allowed to check out books. I think they called his mother, they called the policeman and whatnot. He stayed there until he got that book. Today, the good people of Lake City are renaming that library in memory of Ron McNair. The Dr. Ronald E. McNair Life History Center will join a middle school and a park already named for the astronaut and graduate of MIT. When he died, his son was just three years old. Today, Reginald McNair is 28, and he's in town attending the celebration. Coming back to the Lake City, uh, where he was born and raised, and from what he did, I mean, it's just it's remarkable. It's amazing. People who knew him when say he was always a precocious student and will forever be their hometown hero. For Good Morning America, Steve Osinsami, ABC News.